Hello and welcome to part two of my Holy Grail time-lapse series. In part one I cover gear and how to power it and in this video I want to talk you through setting up. So that covers composition, getting the right focus and your gear settings. And as a special treat you'll get to see the raw unprocessed time-lapse from the A7S and the results of how well that time-lapse app deals with exposure changes from day to night. Alright, I will assume that you already have an idea where you'll be and that you've got all the essential kit that I went through in part one. If you're using a motion device like a rail or a pano mount, you'll want to check the composition works across the whole movement before you start shooting. When I set up with my rail, I take a video of the movement and play it back to make sure it looks correct. This can take a while. At Trachime, it took me 20 to 30 minutes to get the composition that I wanted. Because I had rail movement on an angle, as well as panning motion, I was constantly tweaking the camera position with the ball mount to get exactly what I wanted. If you have a particular night sky subject in mind, like the Milky Way, you want to make sure that it's going to be in frame when it appears. To do this, I use uh, photo pills and its night AR function. Holding this up during the daytime, I can check where the Milky Way will be and determine its direction, making sure that it will be in frame during the whole of the shoot. Also, if you're introducing movement and have a foreground subject relatively close, you can achieve a parallax effect against the night sky or background. Parallax, if you don't know, is what's happening with me right now. You can see that the background is moving through the frame at a different rate to where I am. It's a really cool cinematic effect, which adds an extra sense of depth. Focusing. Again, I turned to photo pills for this. Let me uh, let me show you. Okay. Um, so in photo pills, I go to depth of field. Once I've entered my camera, my focal length, and also my aperture, I can enter an estimate of how far my foreground subject is away from the camera. You want your depth of field far limit to be infinity to make sure that the background is going to be in focus after you've focused onto your foreground subject. Anything other than infinity and you'll find that when you focus on your foreground and the background will be blurred. For me at 14mm at f2.8 my depth of field was 1.88 meters to infinity. Don't just set your lens all the way to infinity. It's likely that the stars will not be in focus there. For example, on my Samyang 14mm, infinity isn't just one single focus position, there's a small range. As you'll be setting up in daylight, you will have no stars to focus on. You can try and focus on a distant subject and make sure that's sharp. You're shooting a time lapse, so the stars don't have to be exactly in focus like you would expect if you were shooting stills. But you still want to be 95% of the way there. If your focus is way out, you won't pick up any stars at all. It's worth understanding where your star focus point is for each of your lenses. Once you've settled on your focus, be very careful putting your lens warmer on. Camera settings. I shot this at ISO 1600 and on aperture priority, which allowed the time-lapse app on the A7S to alter the shutter speed through the various lighting conditions. My aperture was set to f2.8. I needed a fast f-stop to capture the Milky Way, so f2.8 faster if you can. So, these settings gave me a shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second at golden hour, which was just enough to stop overexposure. Then during the night, this went up to the max of 30 seconds. It's all about finding the right balance for day and night. Again, you can test this at home by dialing in some settings and seeing what sort of exposure times come out. All right, time-lapse settings. Before I take you through my time-lapse settings, let's first do a quick recap. Your variables are the number of photos and the shooting interval which is the time between taking each photo. Now for some quick maths that I haven't pre-calculated. If you set your shooting interval to 30 seconds and take 120 photos, that equates to 60 minutes of shooting time. 
120 photos played back and a video at 25 frames per second means the final output will be 4.8 seconds. I'm not, but I should be getting a little brown envelope from PhotoPills for this video. They have a time-lapse calculator. Enter your variables into this and it will tell you your video length, etc. Even include your raw file size that you can calculate your memory usage so that you're confident that the SD card that you have in your camera won't fill up halfway through the night. For my Trachime time-lapse, I set the interval to 45 seconds. You want to be above 30 because the night exposures are going to be maxing out. So 31 or 32 seconds for your interval at a minimum. On the time-lapse app, I had to set the number of shots to the maximum, which was 990. The time-lapse app also has a setting for exposure tracking, which I set to medium. I believe it's this feature which helps smooth out the day to night transition. This gave me 12 hours and 21 minutes of shooting. And if I use 25 frames per second for the final video, which I did, a total of 39.6 seconds of footage, which will be coming at the end of this video. As I wanted to use the time-lapse app on the A7S, I needed to keep the camera in aperture priority mode and let the app determine the exposure time. But this causes a problem for me as I was also using a rail. Ideally, I would use the snap cable that came with the rail to trigger the camera and use the rails app to enter my time-lapse settings. This method would ensure that my camera takes exposures when the rail wasn't moving the move shoot move principle, essentially. Instead, I had to enter the same settings on the app that controls the rail and the A7S time-lapse app. Then I set them off one at a time and I just prayed to the time-lapse gods that they stayed in sync for the whole night. Okay, yeah, so here are the raw results of the shoot. No post-processing, just straight out of the camera Convert it to JPEGs in Lightroom and I'll pump these into Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoy it. As you can see, I've got the start to capture the golden hour on Trachime. Then when it moves through into nighttime, the white balance is now too high. I get the Milky Way captured and my camera movement is following the rotation of the Earth and hence the stars. The rail was higher on the left than the right and you can see the camera getting lower throughout the night. I love how the clouds are dissecting Trachime, and by this time I'm tucked up in the tent and the other astrophotographer's head torches have disappeared. Then at the end the sun rises behind and morning golden hour lights up the mountains in the distance. So in conclusion, I am really happy with how well that raw footage has turned out. The time-lapse app did a fantastic job of smoothing out the exposure transition from day to night and back into day again. Next up will be the final installment of this series where I'll cover post-processing. If you're excited to see how this ends, please like and subscribe. In the meantime, laters gators.